Good morning. Welcome back to the Padilla Family Homestead. Um, if you are new here, we live in an apartment in a city in California and we are gardening in green stock towers and containers and inside the house as well. Um, and we are getting ready for our fall garden. Um, I've been a little bit absent because we have had a pretty constant flow of visitors actually this summer um so uh, my mom's still here she may make an appearance on some videos i'm not sure but i wanted to make sure y'all didn't miss out on the fall garden so i did just get in um some new trays decided it was time um i got in some bootstrap farmer trays i got a few of these we're going to be starting some microgreens in and then um I got a seed starting tray that's heavier duty. And then I got some two and a half inch pots for when I pot up. And then I also got some of the trays that hold the two and a half inch pots in place so they don't fall all over the place. And then these go in the 10 by 20 um, watering trays. Okay, so make sure you hang out with me to the end. I'm going to be doing my August garden update. This will be changing a whole lot over the next couple of weeks. Um, we are in, a, we, we're having weird weather this year. June was like in the hundreds, May hit hundreds. And then in August, we're like 91 today. Um, so we have had weird pests, um, different pests than normal at different times and uh, the plants have struggled a little bit more on different things. Um, but we've gotten a whole lot harvested and some put up. We are gonna be visiting a U-Pick farm this weekend, which I'm super excited about, and hopefully getting some tomatoes because that was not something I did like large quantities of for um, preserving purposes. I mean, when you only have three planters outside, you can't do like canning amounts of tomatoes. So I will be showing that off at the end of the video, but I wanted to walk you through how I uh, plan for my fall garden. Um, I've done this with um, my cousin, and then um, I've had a few other people ask as well, so I figured this is a great resource to have out there. Um, so make sure you follow along and take notes if you want to. So first of all, my daughter and I went through and we decided all the things that we wanted to grow um, and kind of how much we wanted. So last year during fall, we only had a very small um, green stock. I only did three tiers outside and it actually did really well. I got greens off of it um, pretty much all winter and uh, it was beautiful so whatever i plant for fall i'm going to try to have go through winter um the perk of starting it in fall is that it's going to have a chance to grow pretty good and then it's going to cool down and it's going to survive just fine so we are growing brussels sprouts cabbages nasturtiums radishes uh, collards uh, we're going to do lettuce bok choy swiss chard tatsoi uh, parsley. I'm um, going to keep my strawberries going. And then we have mustard greens we're going to be growing, kale, more lettuce, kohlrabi, Chinese cabbage, more strawberries, um, rutabagas, turnips, beets, larger radishes, uh, and one tray of carrots. And then inside I'll be continuing with um, micro tomatoes I'm going to start some more of those today and then I'm also going to try uh, some Monica cucumbers so the Monica cucumbers say they're dual purpose pickling slicing type sets fruit even without pollination it says it's a great greenhouse type so I'm actually going to try to grow one of these inside my husband might kill me for this so if I have no more videos, that would be why. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm gonna try one of these inside. Um, we our cucumbers did not take off out here, um, and I love a uh, fresh cucumber here and there. So I want to try to see if I can get keep these going over the winter, and uh, see what I can do. So we're gonna do micro tomatoes, um, the cucumber. 
I have some Swiss chard inside that may move outside. And then um, once it cools down a little bit. And then the basil did not do great inside as a larger plant. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is just keep going with the basil microgreens. So I'll show you all of that as we jump in. So once I decided kind of what we were gonna grow, I created a, this is, looks a hot mess, and I kind of showed this before, but my daughter and I redid everything. So we decided since we can have three planters to go ahead and take out the tomato tub. Um, we have two green stock towers and we have uh, one a wine barrel that we grew larger tomatoes in. So we're gonna take out that tomato wine barrel and we're gonna put up a third green stock and uh, they are mixed and matched with their sizes so um, for everything I will have out here eventually it's going to be two large um, two regular tier green stalks which have the larger buckets they're five high and then one of the leaf green stock which is smaller and then I just combine them differently um, I have three small tier with three large tier on these two and then my other one will have four large large sections and one small and then um, I'm just changing around what I have planted in them so I went ahead and decided what was going where and I made sure I labeled whether it was small or large um, these are the same size as um, the same height basically as a five tier so uh, nothing changed there and I just water through the top watering tray until it comes out the bottom um, if you're wondering how I get away with six so I just water till it comes out the bottom and I do that if it's over a hundred I usually do it in the morning in the afternoon because they're containers and it's California um, but if it's um, right at about a hundred or under then I usually can just water once in the mornings and they're fine all right, so what I did is I went through them and each of the circles for um, the green stalks have six pockets. And those six pockets, I can put different things in. I'm gonna try to keep similar things um, next to each other on the same pocket so that way their um, whole tray needs the same kind of watering, uh, level of watering, and it also needs the same nutrients. So I have Brussels sprouts I'm going to grow on the top of the green stalks and I'm going to do them every other pocket because they do get really wide and bushy and they get tall. And then I'm going to do small radishes, those the, like 28 day radishes in the pockets in between them. Um, so all three green stalks will have Brussels sprouts and um, radishes. And then um, we decided we're gonna do like three cabbages, but the cabbages are gonna take a while to get bigger, but they're gonna be pretty big, right? And so in between them to start, I'm gonna put some nasturtium, and then when it gets too cold for the nasturtium, then um, the cabbage will be covering that spot. So I'm trying to think about how I'm companion planting if it's not the same thing all the way across. Uh, the other thing that I'm growing is collards. My daughter really liked the collards. She picked them every morning and added them to her eggs. You're going to see so many greens in the fall garden. And um, we love adding them to soups all winter long. We add them to all of our egg scrambles. We add them to everything. So we will definitely have lots and lots of greens and we're super excited about that. And then anything that I feel like it's going to go to waste, I'll dehydrate and create a green powder and add that to my cooking throughout the summer when I don't have as many of these greens. All right, so then um, you'll see I did that on every single one. I tried to take into consideration like this one is going near the door, so it's not going to be next to these two, but these two are going to be next to each other. And um, the ones that are next to each other, I tried to do... The, the things that are going to grow larger in one and then like the beet greens and radish greens and carrot greens and rutabaga and turnip greens aren't going to get as big as the kale 
and um, mustards and things like that. So I'm trying to take into consideration what is being planted next to each other because of the limited space. So once I did this, then I broke out all of my seeds um, for when I needed to plant them. And how I did that was I went through and I wrote down what my first frost was. So you can Google what your first frost is by your zip code. And uh, mine average first frost is November 28th. It actually got moved up last year. We were first week of December. So um, Monday, November 28th is the average first frost. Now here where I am, I'm in zone 9B. I really barely ever get under 28 like we'll get under 32 but I think we didn't hit under 28 till I want to say February um and it was a really weird late freeze so we might have had a day or two in January um so most of the stuff I'm not super worried about for uh that first gentle freeze um but there's a couple of things like the nasturtiums that will probably go away after the first um first gentle yeah the first gentle or hard freeze so we'll see but i went through and i took this sheet and i'm hoping you can see it's probably backwards for you um but i put that this was the first frost date right monday november 28th and then i put a w for how many weeks out from frost and then i put a d for how many days out from frost and then i wrote the date and since this is a Monday I just kept all the Mondays straight down so then I know if something says to sow it five weeks four weeks before the last frost I'm moving it up a week because we are now getting less sun so all the way up until June 21st or whatever um, you are getting more and more sun every single day well after that you start getting less and less sun every day and so I'm already in an area that doesn't get complete full sun um, so I want to make sure I give it another week or two more than what it says because of where I have it planted so I went through and I listed everything out on where I'm gonna start it so five weeks before I'm gonna sow cilantro and my kohlrabi um, seven weeks before I'm gonna go ahead and sow my lettuces that are not very heat tolerant um, nine weeks before I'm gonna start all my mustards my large radishes and my bok choy um, 11 weeks before I'm starting kale carrots I might start some carrots sooner uh, the tatsoi and the rutabagas uh, 12 weeks before I'm doing beets and chard and then uh, 13 weeks before I'm doing collards parsley and then I'm gonna do the bronze lettuce the bronze lettuce is supposed to be more heat resistant and heat tolerant and that 13 weeks before is August 29th so it's still pushing it pretty good so um, I'm gonna try it and I know that some of these things may fail this is my first time really trying some of these at these time frames and trying to stagger it in and um, so we're gonna see how our weather goes and the weather's been really funky this year so I just I'm just going for it I know if I don't find it I'm not getting any so today though we're starting our cabbages, our Brussels sprouts, our nasturtiums. We're going to start all of our microgreens, and then the microgreens I'll replace as needed. Um, we're going to start a couple of Swiss chard, um, and we are going to, what was the other thing I have in here? Oh, I'm going to start a dwarf moringa, and I'm going to try to grow that inside. We'll see how that goes. That is going to be a complete experiment, but it should be a fun one. And then I'm going to start that uh, cucumber as well, but I'm actually going to start that in the pot that it's going to go into. So we're going to jump in. I hope that this kind of helps how uh, you can organize. So I, I just bundled everything by the date that I'm starting it. So I know everything I need to start today is in this, and then the next bundle's in the row for me, ready to go. So it makes it easy, and once I'm done with these, I can just put these seeds away and um, keep myself somewhat organized. I hope I'm good at starting it organized, but not necessarily keeping it organized. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start planting, and then I will take you along and show you this garden tour.
So when I'm growing um, my seeds, I'm going to be putting a clothespin clipped to this side so I know which side is the front. And then um, I am going to, I have a paper labeled one, two, three, four, five, six this way because I have six containers going across and then I have 12 going down. So then I have a column going down. So this one will be considered slot 12, but that is where I'm starting. And that way I can write on this paper and I'll put that the clothespin is on the end by row 12. And then I don't have to put any tags in here. So if I need to cover this with saran wrap and um, let it have a dome or something like that, nothing's gonna get moldy, no containers are gonna lose their ink, I'm not gonna forget what anything is. I have it all written down um, on here. And then when I put up, I'll do something similar or um, at that point, then I will add a tag in. So that is my in inside seed starting tip. So some of these are older seeds and some of them are not. So I'm going to be making sure that I sow a couple extra. Into each little pocket. My daughter's so excited about doing Brussels sprouts. She's one of those weird kids who loves Brussels sprouts. She was such a peaky eater as a little girl. And then um, as she got older, she uh, started, we were really working on the no thank you bites. And she tried Brussels sprouts and she loves them. She won't eat zucchini but she loves Brussels sprouts, so I'm not going to argue too much. Okay, so now I write what these are. And we're trying three different um, Brussels sprouts, and my daughter's idea is to try one of each type in the top of each container. That way we know which area that they grow in and it's not just a variety thing, which I thought was cute. Okay, so we're doing the Groninger and we're doing Long Island Improved and we're trying a red Rubine or Rubine. That's what we're trying there. I'll go ahead and take you through what varieties I'm growing right now, and then I'm probably gonna do a quick time lapse on this, that way you don't have to sit here and watch me plant all these, and then I'll take you on the tour. So I am doing Hilton Chinese cabbage. I'm doing Brunswick cabbage. It's supposed to be a good storage one, I believe. Yeah, stores very well. This one is a vi I'm not going to say it right, but that's a very pretty one. I'm also growing the, I did put Swiss chard in here, so I guess I'm going to try it right now. Must have changed my mind on that one. And then the three nasturtiums we're going to grow are the Whirly Bird Rose, the Alaska Mix, and the Tip Top Rose. This is the Moringa Dwarf Tree that I'm going to try to start. Um... Oh, actually, that's why it's important to read the back of your seeds. I need to soak the seed in very warm water for two to three days. So I'll be starting this in the water and then I'll be growing that later. Uh, this is the tomato that I am growing inside. And then um, these two I'm also growing inside. That's why they're in here. So I have a uh, bok choy, and it is the mini bok choy. I have gotten it for free, and I thought this would be adorable to grow inside. And then um, I also got the free seed um, Tom Thumb lettuce. So I am gonna try to grow these inside as well. So I'll be starting those seeds today. So those are varieties I'm doing. I'm gonna get planting um, 
enjoy the time lapse. Hopefully you enjoy the music and then I'll take you on this tour in just a minute. Okay, since I got all those planted now, I'm going to go ahead and take you on a small tour of my outside garden. And then um, yeah, probably in a couple weeks, I'll do the inside garden because there's really not much there. I just planted it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around and take you along. All right, so like I said, we are growing in the green stock planters. Uh, one is doing absolutely amazing and one is a hot mess. So I do not suggest zucchini uh, in one of these unless you have some sort of support system. So I planted my zucchini right there in the third tier and it is all the way down there and it is being wrecked by caterpillars right now and I have literally gotten one zucchini off of this. So it's coming out, um, it has been 120 days since I did my sweet potatoes. So these will be being dug up pretty soon. My chamomile's on its way out the door. I've gotten quite a bit off of these few little plants, um, but they are, they are in struggle bus. So they're gonna be coming out. Um, my mint did start to come back, uh, but it is now being wrecked by caterpillars. Um, my strawberries are doing amazing. I have some radishes, some quick radishes up here growing. I do have these on the spinning base to make my life easier. So um, here's some more strawberries. You can see like it's August and I have strawberries. So I'm super happy about that. Uh, this is a candy cane pepper that I had got and it is producing wonderfully. I've gotten quite a few off of here. Um, that's pretty much it in this container. I just tried to do some nasturtiums, but it's really too hot for them. So we'll see. I'm pretty much gonna cut this one as a loss and get it ready for the fall. Uh, this one though, this one is something to talk about. So this one has all of the uh, Korean hyssop, the Arcado pink hyssop, all of my Agastaches or Agastaches are growing. I've got the uh, Rose Mint, the Texas Hummingbird. Um, I have got the Navajo Sunset and then the Apache Sunrise, I think is what it is. I've got peppers coming in strong. Just got these retied up. So I have peppers everywhere. I have more strawberries. Let's see, I got more peppers down here. That basil just started getting attacked. So the, something is laying the caterpillars, the eggs, and they're hatching right now. So I have to go through and clean that out. But look at those shishitos. I've got some peas restart, or beans restarted in here. So hopefully I'll get some beans. These ones are a purple one. More, those are the shishitos here. And then in here I've got some bell peppers finally coming on. I'm trying to get the camera in. Oh, these are the Thai hot peppers. Um, so all the peppers are coming in. I'm gonna rotate this around again. 
This side is a little bit more bare, but this is the one that faces the back the most. So this one is a, not a pino, and I got my first one coming up on this now. And then um, this one is Pippin's Golden Honey, I believe. And that's my first Pippin's Golden Honey. So I'm super excited about that. It's another strawberry plant. The marigolds at its end. So that's that container. This one I'm going to keep going for quite a while as much as I can. Let those peppers grow so I can get a good harvest on those. And then my tomato tub, I actually topped both of them. Um, so I have the Berry's Crazy Cherry here and then I have the black strawberry here. I think you can see that red one. So I am not actually a fan of the black strawberry flavor as much. They're okay, but they're not my favorite. Um, I'll probably grow them because I have the seeds, but they're not going to be like my top my top one. Berry's Crazy Cherry I absolutely love. However, we had really early heat this year. And, oh, actually, I thought all of these died. But look, I got some little ones starting in here. I got a few there. And I do have some little ones coming up. But all of these, I wasn't getting any fruit on. But I think I might actually have some coming in. So I might leave this one for a little while before I build the other planter. And just see if I can get some more tomatoes. But those are my two tomato tubs. Um, the basil at the bottom is a Thai basil. I have been harvesting that like crazy. That doesn't have damage on it, so from what I can tell, the caterpillars actually have not, knock on wood, been an issue this year over here. Now, the tree trimmers and the, the tree trimmers who broke my branches off and the leaf blowers and all of that's a whole different story, but so far the caterpillars haven't been bad on my tomatoes. So that's kind of what's going on with the towers. So when we grow for fall, we're gonna keep two towers here. That one will be a different one. It'll be all deep pocket and small on the top. And then this one will get put on not the spinning base, but a rolling base. And um, that one will be over by our front door. And that is what we will grow in. So overall, it's actually been a pretty good year with these. Um, in previous years, I had to tear them down, um, but we got approval for them to stay up. So this is the first time they've been up outside through August, uh, through all of July and in, into August. And uh, they're doing amazing. Um, I have harvested so many herbs to dry and make tea. Um, this has been great. It's actually due for another harvest. The peppers are coming in super strong. Um, I'm really considering next year not doing a tomato tub and just doing a ton of the micro tomatoes um, in here and seeing if I can um, get a good harvest that way and have a bunch of other stuff growing. Uh, but we will see when it comes time for next year what I decide to do. But this has definitely worked. Uh, the variety of things has worked. Um, I do need to work on staking issues. Um, because some things grew bigger than I planned and then um, I don't know if the sweet potatoes worked kind of questioning that my regular potato rotted and I think because I have it Layered in with all these other things some things need a ton of water and some things don't and so I have to make sure my towers are set up appropriately to where I water less an entire tower and then water another tower more um, and figured that out. So it's gonna be a balancing act, but that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, I am very excited about um, how this year went and um, stay tuned and we will see what we are looking like come September.